Every day in Iowa City, I see people in passing, and I think to myself, I wonder who that person is. Did he grow up here? Or did he come for college and end up staying because he got a grant for his research? Or maybe the love of his life is a townie. They decided. decided to raise their kids here. In Iowa City, today I see people. I see people every day and wonder what's her story and wonder or what she does for a living. I see her around and walking her dog. Maybe she's the writer of that, of that book I loved so much. Maybe she's a dancer, a chef. Iowa City is interesting like that. The guy sitting next to you on the bus could be your new favorite singer. That lady who helped held the door open for you could be a filmmaker. A politician. I see people. I see people every day and wonder. And what's wonder. What's your story? 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 Teacher, musician, rapper, playwright. Idris Goodman came to the performance of words through hip hop culture and has named what he does, breakbeat poetry. Under that umbrella, his award-winning talents and message converge, taking on complex subjects like race, identity, and healthy food in our schools. Idris Goodwin serves up some substance and teaches us all, by example, that if what you're doing doesn't fit into the model, it's time to change its name. A preface. Now you're gonna hear me refer to myself as black. And you're going to hear me refer to other members of the black race as black. Now by race, I refer to skin color. And in terms of skin color, I mean brown. Now commonly, brown refers to members of the Latino race. And as I said, in terms of race, I mean skin color. But in terms of skin color, I mean brown, but not Latino. I mean black. Though it should be noted that plenty of Latinos and uh, Indians, Pakistanis, Thai, Vietnamese, Chinese, Japanese, Native Americans, Arabs, you know, pretty much the majority of the world are all different variations of the color brown. But in terms of members of the brown-skinned black race, I mean African-American. And when I say African-American, I don't mean exactly like President Obama, whose father was born and raised on the continent of Africa and mother was not. We can, of course, assume she's the American part, but he is black and not biracial. See, biracial works best if you're like Chinese and Croatian, or like Portuguese and Saudi Arabian. Black means you're not white. And if you're not a nationality, then you're black, which means brown, but not Latino. Though it should be noted that plenty of Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, etc., and so forth refer to themselves as brown, unless, of course, they come from Spain. Now, if they come from Spain, brown, means gypsy. Now, when I say black, surely you will think I am including those individuals from places like Barbados and Jamaica and Trinidad, et cetera, and so forth, and I do. In terms of race, skin color, they are black. Except, of course, for the non-brown people that live in those countries, but that's, that's, an issue of, uh, that's an issue of nationality, is it not? Okay, I am only talking about descendants of stolen Africans who were put on plantations that later migrated throughout North and South America. Not that that's the quintessential experience for all brown people. I mean black, brown, non-Latino Americans who descended from stolen Africans. And Afro-Latinos, you know, <laughs> black uh, Puerto Ricans like Roberto Clemente or like black Dominicans like Sammy Sosa used to be. They are black, brown, black, brown, black people. And both baseball players. But we'll get to that later. Now, culturally, ethnically, nationally speaking, here's what I'm saying. By black, I mean brown-skinned Africans and their variants. No, by black I mean descendants of stolen people whose entire rhythm is in constant debate, demand, and duplication, whose mere existence is an atrocious masterpiece. By black I mean brown? So Idris, you describe yourself as a breakbeat poet. Mm -hmm. Now that's your, your own term, right? Yes. But, but what does it mean? Uh, yeah, I invented this term breakbeat poetry because uh, I honestly got tired of the title, or let me say that I, I found the title of slam poet kind of limiting, right? Because uh, a slam is an event, right? Mm. So typically at a slam, there's a cert certain style of performance. So because the object of a slam is to win the audience's approval or acceptance, um, the style of writing acknowledges that you're writing for an audience and that there's a certain interest in connecting with them with trying to, um, you know, get a reaction out of them, whether it be, you know, making them laugh or making them, you know, 
uh, think deeply about something or you know changing their ideas about something um, and so typically that's the mm. style of poetry performed at a slam but not all performance poets or writers who are interested in connecting with the audience participate in competitive slams I've only been in one slam my entire life and it was a goof like you know Somebody was like, I'm putting you, I'll put you on the list. And it was at a bar. And someone was like, I'll put you on the list. You know, and I kind of like. And he did it. Yeah. And I did it just, yeah. to, but I didn't take it serious at yeah, all. Yeah. It was like, I had already been writing and performing for, you know, a, a, a long time. So it was mm -hmm. like, whatever. Um, so, yeah. So I really thought about what is it that I do? You know, what is it that I do? And, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, what's the guy's name? Um, Henry Rollins tours every year doing a spoken word show. But it's right. really just him telling stories. And so I'm like. My thought, my knowledge of spoken word was something different of like, you know, some Spalding Gray or what Henry Rollins does. So I was like, you know, what, what is it that I do, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I do, I am a rapper, you know, and I do work with, with hip hop beats, but you know, the stuff that I do that doesn't have music or doesn't rhyme, like what do we call that? So right. uh, basically, uh, I was reading about the beat poets and a lot of what the beat poets were trying to do was make poetry live off the page, mm -hmm. you know, and they were very influenced by improvisation and jazz and music. And so, um, for, for me and members of my generation, uh, we, are, we all came up on hip hop music, and the root of hip hop music is the break beat, which is the you know, 15, 20 second uh, breakdown, you know, the drum and bass rhythm breakdown of a, of a record, like looped and chopped and blended with other loops. And so, mm. you know, the break beat is where it all comes from. And so, um, uh, that's why I came up with break beat poets. Yeah. Um, so, that's, that's where that term comes from. You know, there's there's lots of uh, different things that come to mind when you hear rap or hip hop, and mm -hmm. people that people that don't connect with hip hop and rap maybe that have a negative connotation with that. I mean, I've 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 read your work, I've listened to you perform mm -hmm. your your stuff, and and you've got a you've got a really deep message, a really a really positive message, a message that makes people think about what you're saying, and I know a lot of hip hop and a lot of rap music does that, but you didn't choose that title, you chose. Breakbeat. You decided to name mm -hmm. it yourself and kind of. Mm -hmm. So maybe you're the pioneer in a whole new genre here. Actually, you know what? I woke up this morning. Uh, I woke up this morning and I was like, man, I need to write this down. Like, I need to write like an official manifesto. You know, like Frank O'Hara has this great manifesto that he wrote called uh, Personist Poetry. And it's a really funny manifesto, but it's him saying, like, this is the type of poetry that, 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 I'm, that I'm writing from here on out. And it, you know, in a way, it's sort of. It's sort of like satirical, a little bit of literary manifestos, but I think he's also right. there's there's some uh, some 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 sincerity in it as well. And so uh, I, I think I'm going to write the manifesto because I really do believe, um, to my knowledge, um, no one thinks about what we do in this way. I mean, people just think that you know you're either performance poet or a slam poet, and um, and and that's all fine and good. But I I just have my own particular viewpoint. And since I've I've come up with that idea, that thought, it's really actually helped me to um, really figure out exactly what I'm trying to do with my writing and what it's for and all these kind of questions yeah. that a lot of artists ask. You know, it's, I've defined it for myself. And so I'm like, all right, good. I'm good. I'm ready to, you know, I'm yeah. ready to go to work. You know, I'm ready to play four quarters. And, you, and you know? you're going and you're, you're, you're presenting at colleges and high schools. You're an educator as well. Yeah. And you're going mm -hmm. in there and you're, you're saying to these kids, you know, this, this is a way to express yourself. This is a way to, to tell your story, to talk about things you want to talk about. But... Is there really, I mean, has, has spoken word found a place in universities and higher education institutions? Um, you know, to my knowledge, it, it, it hasn't, uh, spoken word and, and performance poetics is not a widespread uh, area of study mm -hmm. in universities. I mean, there are some exceptions, like uh, Matt, University of Wisconsin-Madison has what they call the first wave program, which is designed for, you know, young people who want to learn the art of spoken word performance. Um, but it's very rare, and you know some schools, you know, have little offshoots or right, clubs, you know, electives or, right. and stuff like that. But to my knowledge, it's not like I, I can't go get a BA in performance poetry or spoken word. And you know, it, it it should be because you know there are a lot of people. I mean, look at what it does. It just it, it's basically it combines writing and performance, and so. Mm. You know, it's not like writing a play or, or writing even a, a one-person show. Um, it's 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 short pieces. It's it's short pieces that exist in and of themselves, and you know mm -hmm. they, they involve some some aspect of editorial and commentary. Uh, they involve a bit of you know confessional writing. It, it involves uh, you know, and it's ripe with poetic device and poetic technique. Um, but also too, you know, the performance styles. I mean, it draws from all these different genres, but it is its own thing. 
And I think we have to, you know, what I'm interested in is creating a space and a community uh, where this sort of work can be explored. Because a lot of the things that people don't like about it, you know, a lot of the, the um, resistance.